Do you want me to repeat the question in the answer? More recently, I've been known for doing wooden sculptures out of uh, a thing called palm fronds, which actually includes woodwork, paintwork, done a lot of metalwork, uh, upholstery, paint, you know, uh, casting, all kinds of stuff. I've always been artistic, but I've never, it wasn't like a goal of mine to be an artist until actually uh, fairly recently. Um, it was something my family was pushing me towards when I was a kid. And I was really uh, resistant to it, honestly. Uh, there was, every year, you know, I'd get like the little plastic set of like colored pencils and crayons and stuff, and I hated it. You know, I, I didn't want that, I, didn't, I wanted toys. That kind of led me into, you know, as I got older and the things I was doing, you know, I, I like seeing what kind of creativity I could come up with. Uh, and at one point it clicked and, you know, it started making money and so one thing led to another. I had seen a palm frond that was carved in a friend of mine's shop down in uh, San Diego it was, it was cool, it was unusual. Uh, and you know, being in San Diego, there's a lot of them laying around. So I had found one at one point and decided to give it a shot. Um, and it wasn't really anything I, I was all that excited about. It was cool enough, um, you know, but when other people had seen it and requested them, it just kind of snowballed and, you know, became a thing. I enjoy creating all kinds of art or all kinds of things. It's cool, but it's not nearly as cool as what you can come up with when you actually lock in with somebody else who has a completely different style or they work in a different media or whatever. You get together on these things and um, it's, it's awesome. Like the work that comes out of it, they couldn't have produced on their own, you wouldn't have produced on your own. And so uh, that's really where Built in America started was I wanted to, I wanted the opportunity to do that and I was already traveling around a little bit and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna start filming it and uh, see what happens. And you know, we ended up with this. Do it, do something. You know, there's so many people telling you no. There's so many people saying why things won't work. You might even be telling yourself something won't work. Take the time, try it out. Uh, if nothing else, you'll, you'll learn a new technique or you'll figure out that something really does not work for you. Uh, just believing that it won't because you tell yourself it won't or somebody else says it won't isn't, doesn't cut it for me. I was moving shops in Las Vegas and I was looking into the, this building and the uh, land management guy was like, oh, there's you know this like father-son team next door who they build like cars and bikes and stuff. Uh, you, you'll probably get along real well. When I met him, I found out, you know, it was Magic Mike. I wasn't privy to him at that point, but um, I'd seen some of his stuff, so that was really neat. I found out that it wasn't a father-son team. They didn't build together. He made some really cool stuff, and uh, we just connected pretty well, and, and you know, it was just a, an easy, fun, you know, friendly relationship. We could uh, work with each other in a lot of ways. When I started putting together the list of people that I want to do involved myself with uh, for Built in America. The idea was, it was people that I, I wanted to work with, people that I knew I would enjoy working with, and people that I felt, um, you know, if I, even if I was just gonna be able to give them the smallest bit of uh, exposure, I wanted it to be people that I really liked as a person and as a creator, and Mike was just a, a really natural choice for that. Mike and I, take a, a bike that he's had, you know, he, he actually has a number of uh, different frames and engines and stuff that are around his shop, um, waiting more or less for projects that he's gonna do, or uh, in this case, you know, his brother uh, was talking about wanting a bike, and uh, so we take a frame that we had actually hardtailed previously and pull the motor out, pull the trans out, and, you know, we assembled a pretty complete bike uh, all within the time of, uh, I believe, 10, nine or 10 videos. I had a number of people that I would consider mentors, some of them for longer periods of time, some of them more substantial than others, but you know, there's so many people that affect your your journey and, and stuff if you really allow them to. You know, uh, one of them, James Wagaman in California, uh, he's an Oceanside. He's a painter, pinstriper, uh, bike builder and stuff. And um, I met him shortly after I, I got out of the Marine Corps and uh, he was just a cool guy. At first, he didn't really care for me too much. I was just some young kid he didn't know. Uh, but, you know, I was persistent and he 
Um, he, he warmed up to me. You know, he had no choice. He did a lot for me as far as showing me some some different ways to do it. He got me into a few early uh, shows and stuff when I really, honestly, probably didn't even deserve to be at those shows. Uh, but you know, he saw something in me that you know he wanted to help develop. So. Um, you know, my dad was a big one as far as doing uh, metal fabrication, blacksmithing, uh, casting, things like that. Like, uh, I grew up doing all that stuff. You know, uh, we weren't, we didn't have a lot of money or anything like that. So uh, we built everything. You know, my dad would, you know, he didn't, if, if he wanted a kitchen table, he would build it. You know, and that was a huge part of my upbringing and what got me to where I am now. Success is multidimensional in my opinion. Uh, you can be financially successful and be completely miserable. Uh, you can be the happiest person in the world and uh, create everything you want to create and be completely broke. I think that true success is unachievable. I don't think that you can ever be a complete success. Like there's always some part in your life that you need to build on. There, there's never a time that I'm completely content with what I'm doing. You know, I can be happy with the progress I've made, I can be happy with the direction I'm going, but I think contention is uh, actually a really bad thing. If I could create a piece of art for one person, it would be General Mattis, Mad Dog Mattis, because that is a bad dude. And uh, you know, being a prior Marine myself, like, you know, that's uh, definitely a, a role model. A bulldog, I'd make a, you know, Marine Corps, uh, you know, the, the Marine Corps Bulldog, for sure. I would want to be, I would want to master paint simply because no matter what you do, you can always make it better with paint. And um, knowing how it works and stuff, like, and I've worked with paint and stuff uh, quite a bit, and you know, I'm decent at airbrushing and stuff, but like, there are people that create illusions uh, out of paint that you could not do with any other medium. Like, absolutely not. No way. So I'd say paint. The advice I'd give my younger self is, be better with money. Money's never been a motivator for me. Uh, I would, I work enough for money to be able to, to live, but like it's never been something that is a, um, you know, a goal of mine. I've never had like a number, like I need to be a millionaire or whatever. Like I don't really care about money. Um, and that's something I, I put in myself younger that I just, I wish I wouldn't have because, um, Money makes a lot of things easier, uh, but it shouldn't be your, at least in my opinion, it shouldn't be your like end goal. I've tried some VR stuff. I actually uh, was working, I, I do some editing and stuff, and uh, I was working with a company who was doing, uh, it's not virtual reality, it's uh, augmented reality, where it's, it's your surroundings and they add stuff in. Um, I wasn't that into it, honestly. It was it was something that I didn't feel connected to or like I could uh, find a use for. But since working with the VR Loot crew, I actually, I'm really excited about it. I'm, it's opened up my eyes to a lot of different things that I didn't think about before. I really like the how-to. I like uh, the informational side of it. Um, more movement, more, uh, you know, which it's not on the crews or anything else. It's just, a, you know, we're kind of boxed in with how the technology works right now, but I'm really excited for once uh, it's a more fluid, immersive environment where uh, the end user can actually move around a bit. And if you know anything about the technology, you know that that's not an easy feat to do at all, but uh, that's what I'm looking forward to in the future. Filming the VR Loop experience so far has been really pleasant. I mean, it's uh, you know easy to work with as far as the crew goes. Um, I'm not doing anything that I wouldn't normally do anyway, except, you know, there's there's breaks and stuff and, you know, having to be mic'd up and stuff. But for the most part, that's been good. This particular experience was really hot. I don't know if you noticed, but, uh, you know, we have to turn off all the fans and everything uh, so that you guys can actually hear what we're saying. And that's miserable. Be creative, you know? There's so many things that can be done. Uh, you will never, at this point in life, I, I believe it's absolutely true that you will never do anything that's absolutely original. You will always be biting off of something that somebody else has already done, but that doesn't mean that your work can't be original. And as long as you're giving credit where it's due and you're not stepping on people's toes and blatantly ripping them off, take inspiration. Don't be afraid to be inspired. Take it, make it your own, and you know, contribute to the world of art.